Hello everybody, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be talking about setting up a very very basic code plug for the XTS 5000 and 2500 portable or handheld radios. So we're going to be covering the programming, the hardware required, the programming cables, and some of the other extra things you could do with it. Um, now we're not going to go too much into detail into the extra stuff, however this video should be a basic guide on how to get these radios to at least talk to each other and do digital and analog voice. Now this video will not cover TMS or text messaging, any of the packet data stuff, that's for later on down the road. And if you run into some errors about, you know, your radios not having the right features and all, we'll be covering that in a different video, probably covering Depot at the same time. Um, now those will be uploaded to Odyssey, anything that is spicy or 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 adding features to the radio will be on odyssey not on youtube so go ahead and follow our odyssey channel i highly i highly recommend you do that just in case we upload some stuff on there not on youtube and especially if we get deplatform, that's another reason why you guys should follow the odyssey channel but anyways let's get started so we have two xts 5000s right here these are basically identical and we want to program them, right? So we need a programming cable right here. And this is a USB one. So I'm gonna have a link down in the description below to this. Now, one thing that's special about these radios is that they actually do not have USB, okay? So the chip inside here is a USB to serial interface adapter. And specifically, it's serial RS-232. So it's one of the older serial standards, but you need to have this FTDI chip, this this USB to serial adapter in order for you to use USB. Now if your computer has an RS-232 serial interface then you can go ahead and buy the actual legit programming cable that has the serial connector and the radio connector right here. Um, now for me I am not I don't have that on my computer so I'm going to stick with the USB one and I highly recommend that you do too unless you have again the serial connector on your computer. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my computer right now. And these actually require drivers so if you buy one of these and I'll have a link down in the description below again. If you buy one of these you actually need to, the computer needs to install a driver. Now if, if you're using this on a computer that never touches the internet so like let's say a secure machine. Uh, you need to install the, the drivers manually because Windows will not pick that up. So, but if if the, if the computer is connected to the internet, you should have no problems with running this out of the box. You don't even need a installation disk to install the driver or anything like that. It should auto, it should be automatic. So, not to worry about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the USB cable. Okay, we, we should hear something connect to the computer. And then here we have the first radio right here. I'm actually going to use this one over here. So right now there is a very, very basic code plug that I generated and put on this radio. Um, it literally has nothing on it. And that's because I want to walk through all the steps with you guys on how to get this thing actually to work at least enough to where these can talk to each other and maybe you can listen and talk on some repeaters and stuff like that. But in this video, we're just going to stick to simplex only channels or talk around channels. So single frequency channels, so that would be used in like a radio to radio case, not necessarily repeater or anything like that. That's for probably a later video, but um, anyways, we're going to go ahead and launch up CPS on the computer. Just go ahead and click start using CPS, that always pops up, and you can disable that if you want. Go ahead and plug in your radio to the computer, just like that, and one of the first things one of the first things we want to do is read from the radio. Every single radio you have, you will be reading from at least once, okay? So just go go ahead and click read device. And we have this port right here. And okay, so Windows is a little special because you have to select the COM port or the serial port the, that you want to be reading from. Now, in this case, it's going to be COM3, but it'll most likely be something different on your computer. If reading does not work, Go ahead and select through all of the options right here besides USB. And if none of those work, that means there's something wrong with your cable and the connection to the radio. But if 
like let's say if I try to read from COM1, which I know will not work, CPS should give me an error. Just like that, radio failed to acknowledge, and that's because there's no radio connected to that port. So we want to change that from COM1 to COM3, which actually will disappear if I unplug the cable, COM3 should disappear. So that's how we know that, that, that this is the correct COM port for this cable and the radio. So just click OK. And now we're actually reading, and if you have the cable I linked below, there are some status lights on the cable. And you should hear the radio beep, the radio should go into programming mode. The lights on the cable should be lighting up, lighting up right now. Um, if, it's, if it's the same cable I have, it should be a red LED and a green LED. Red is transmit and green is receive, so that's just how the serial interface works, and they should be flashing. So let's wait for CPS to populate with the code plug. And sometimes this can take a while depending on how big the code plug is and depending on the features you have enabled. The code plug can be bigger sometimes, sometimes it can be smaller. It just depends on what's going on inside of it. And since this is the default code plug, I believe FPP or front panel, front panel programming is what's causing the delay in this case. So in CPS, it just finished reading. You should have this tree view window and a bunch of these options right here. So we're actually not going to do anything in CPS just quite yet. What we're going to do is unplug the first radio we read from, swap over to the second radio I have, plug that in, and do not mess with this window, this CPS window. Just go ahead and drag it over towards the side and do that. Um, so now go ahead and launch up a second instance of CPS. It's okay if you do this. Now on different programming softwares, it may not be recommended and this is usually just an Astro thing. So just drag it over to the left hand side. Now you have two uh, instances of CPS open, which allows us to work on two different radios at the same time. And you could do this, you could add more instances of CPS depending on how many radios you're working on. It's just up to your circumstance. So again, we want to re-device COM port three, since this is the same cable, um, just click okay now and it should be reading. And the LEDs are again flashing on my cable. And the radio should go into programming mode. And that's how we know the computer and the radio are talking. So now we have the code plug loading up in CPS. And we have two tree views right here. And the one on the right kind of formed incorrectly. Um, so I'm gonna just change the window a little bit. So we have both of them loaded up, the radio is still connected, and I have the other radio over here. Nothing should have happened to the radio since we just read the code plug. And now we're actually going to modify the code plug on the computer to write back to these so we could actually get them to talk. So let's focus on that right now. So we have two tree views and Astro CPS is a little unique because it has the tree view, which sort of organizes the programming a little better. It depends on your preference, but it can be a lot to get used to as soon as you just bought these, right? So my goal is to kind of break this down and to only cover the things that you need to change in order for these to work, okay? And depending on where you bought this radio from, it may already have the programming loaded into it. However, I'm going to start fresh and assume you do not have this set up, okay? So this radio, if we go into feature and we go into radio information and then feature set, you can see all the features this radio has, okay? And in a future video, we're gonna be talking about how to actually change this feature set with Depot. However, that's something out of the scope of this video, but I just want, I just want you to know that this is how you check all the features that are in the radio, all right? And depending on what these features depending on what the, the radio has for features is what shows up on this list. The feature set defines on what you can do in this in the code plug, okay? I hope that makes sense, but go just click close and you can see general um, the flash code which is what the feature set is derived from. Uh, we'll also talk about how to generate these and how to modify them. 
your serial number, which is individual to your radio, the model number, which which defines RF band the radio is in, and if it's a model one, two, or three radio, the if if it has a display or full display keypad, um, you know. So and then system package is conventional. So these radios come in two system packages, so to say. One is conventional and one is trunked. And that also depends on the feature set. And ideally, for tactical usage, we are only going to be dealing with conventional P25 operation, not trunked operation that is outside the scope of, in my opinion, of all tactical radio communication. That is just something we don't deal with. That is more of a public safety thing. So we can go, go ahead and close out of this. And the first thing we want to do is go into radio configuration right here and go into radio wide. So radio wide is basically the options that affect the entire radio regardless of zone or channel that you're in. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do um, I'm gonna go ahead and go into radio wide on the other code plug right here. And one of the first things we want to do is we want to look through all these features and kind of figure out what's going on here. So this is the 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 buttons up here sort of categorize the options and there is a lot of options on these radios. These are very customizable radios. Um, and it can get a little complicated at times to figure out what's going on here. But no worries, we're gonna be covering most of these features in the video series, so just stay tuned. We are looking for the backlight. Backlight timer. Um, it's gonna be in here somewhere. Okay, right here, underneath advanced. Auto rotary light, so we want this to light up the display whenever we change the channel so we could see what's going on the radio um, and we want to do that on the same radio on the other radio over here auto rotary light and we can change the light the, the backlight timer here uh, right now it's set to 15 I'm gonna go ahead and change it to 10 because I don't want it to shine bright constantly and you can change this to whatever you want this is in seconds so yeah and then from here, I think we were actually okay in uh, radio wide. Um, let's look through here. All this stuff over here is uh, we're gonna be covering this in a later video, um, especially on when we cover text messaging and stuff like that. That is that is something for a later video, of course. So I think in here we're good. And then underneath controls, this is how you modify the controls of the radio. And we're gonna work on the buttons first. So the top button is referring to the orange button right here. Um, and right now it's set to emergency, and I don't really like that because the radio, depending on how it's programmed, can do some funky things that, that might be able to get in trouble for emergency. So I would just go ahead and change that to, um, let's see here, channel announcement. Uh, I'll get into that later, but it basically tells you which channel you're in if you have voice announcement set up. So I'm just gonna do that for right now. That's my preference. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and change that on the other radio at the same time. Uh, channel announcement. And then the side buttons, these are the buttons right here. The purple one, the one with the single dot and the double dot. For the very top purple one, I like to have that set to the backlight toggle. Um, it's in here somewhere. Light. Okay, it's just called light. So underneath that, I want this to be scan on and off. That's my preference. If you want to change this later on, you, you can totally do that. It's in here somewhere. Scan. There we go. And then on the bottom, I want to set this to keypad lock. This locks the keypad and, and prevents me from uh, enabling buttons and stuff like that when it's in my plate carrier or something like that. I just generally don't want um, the radio to do something I don't want whenever I can't see it. And, and depending on what menu you're in, like let's say you go into the FPP menu, um, or maybe the TMS venue, it actually will prevent you from actually transmitting, which is a problem. Um, so just you want to make sure you have keypad locked somewhere in the function, uh, the functionality of this radio. 
So for data button, uh, I recommend just leave this to TMS. That'll come in handy later on the next couple of videos. So just click close. That should be it for the buttons. And for switches, we're actually going to ignore handheld control head, by the way. So for switches, I'm talk uh, we're talking about the three position switch up here. So you have A, B, and C. And the way I like this is I like to have this set to the zones. So a zone is basically a collection of channels. So a zone, let's say I'm going to be using zones to classify areas of operation. So I have three towns or maybe two towns that I travel to that I travel between frequently. And I have a set of frequencies that I use in a certain town and I have a set of frequencies I use in town two. And then let's say on channel C, I have frequencies that talk to both towns, right? So each one of those zones has a set of channels or frequencies that are programmed into them. And this, this selector selects those zones. So zones might be a new, um, a new idea to you if you come from Baofengs, because Baofengs don't really have that. They just have a list of channels that you can scroll through. So in CPS, we're going to select zone select and we're going to get this error here, this red error. And that's because in order for you to use this, this switch, all of them have to be set to zone select. And we'll see here the error goes away. Okay. So, and then we'll program the, the concentric switch. So this switch up here, you can probably see that moving back and forth in the video and that you actuate from back here like that. What I like to use this for is transmit inhibit. A lot of people will use these for secure on and secure off, which is enabling and disabling encryption. For me, I like to have this for transmit inhibit because I don't really like to have the chance of talking clear air like on accident. I will never know until, you know, the radio is telling me, "Hey, you're uh, like it, it'll it'll probably beep at me that hey I'm transmitting clear air please don't do that so um, yeah I set that to transmit inhibit and if it's on the off switch I will not be able to transmit so yeah, that's one thing I like so that should be it for switches now for rotary control um, we have this little rotary switch up here and it has 16 all the way at the very end of it and um, it actually does not have it labeled but this has 16 positions right and I can't imagine myself having 16 zones so I'm going to use it for channel select and this is just something that's a little easier to handle and change channels in whenever it's vertical in a plate carrier and surrounded by a bunch of cloth that's the way I like it so channel select is probably what you should you should pick as well I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, go through all of that with the other radio. Okay, so now we're going to go to programming the menu. And, okay. So, generally speaking, we want text justification to be to the left. We want the text on the display to be as left as possible because we read left to right, right? So that's the way I like it. And for me, I want the text configuration to be four and eight or eight and four. And this is because I want the zone. So if you see Z1 right here on the camera, Z1 is the text for the zone. And we could change that. We can change that to home. We could change that to maybe a security classification like restricted or secret um, or maybe confidential or public or or analog or FRS or something like that right we can change the zone to do whatever what say whatever we want right and I kinda wanna have more characters there than just three so I like to have it at four and then from there we'll go to the menu items and this is where you really start to get into optimizing the user experience. So if you're gonna be pro programming these for lots of dudes, you wanna make sure you have the most common menu items first, okay? So for me, that's going to be mute mode, and what mute does is it mutes all the tones of the radio, okay? 
and I believe you might be able to change the functionality where it mutes all the sound, even the ones from the speaker. Um, although that's probably something that you should handle with surveillance mode rather than mute. And then, um, so mute, I, I, I like it to be one of the first one of the first menu items. So next we're gonna look for power. So it should just be PWR. Maybe, yeah, right there. And move this up. So the order right here is actually the order it'll show up here. So this is position one, two, and three. And if you have anything else in this menu tree, in this menu list, you have to press the right on the D-pad to go to the next page for the menu. And here we have clone, um, that's gonna be changed, but back in the CPS, uh, you'll have power, and then I like to have uh, battery, because I like to check the, the status of my battery often. And then let's look for user. This is going to be very helpful for data applications later on, like text messaging. I like to have that on the second page. And then zone up and zone down is very important. So like we said, the channel switch up here is A, B, and C, or the zone switch up here is A, B, and C. This will only allow you to select three zones, the first three zones in the radio. Now, some I like to have more than three zones. So what I like to do is have zone up and zone down as menu buttons on the second page. And I'll actually put clone in between those, actually not clone, I'll actually put user in between those so that user will be the middle option right here and zone down will be the left option and zone up will be the right option. So I have zone up, zone down, and then user in the middle. Um, so in here, uh, we actually have clock. I don't want that there. I want to move that all the way down and clone right here. Uh, I don't really use clone because I program the radios in CPS. Now I know a lot of the Marine guys have programmed XTS 2500s all through cloning and FPP or front panel programming, which uh, hats off to those guys because that is not an easy task to program all these radios. And they use clone to, to, to clone the code plug to the other radios, but we're not gonna be, I'm not gonna be using that, so it's up to you. I got, I'll get rid of it. And then uh, I just deleted clock on accident, so I'll add that back. This is how you view the clock. Um, you can see up here the time is is up there, but I want like a second readout, so yeah. And then everything else here, uh, we actually we want to enable erase. So what erase does is it has the functionality to erase all the encryption keys on the radio on the radio. So if this radio is about to get captured or something like that, maybe you're about to go into, um, maybe you have to surrender the radio to some party that wants your radio for whatever reason, like maybe they're doing a search on you. Erase the keys before you do that because you'll still be able to hear your buddies on the radio if it's still on, if the encryption keys are loaded. So having the erase key on here for like a panic function is something I recommend and uh, you could put that somewhere in here. And I, I like to put it on the very last page so I can immediately press left on the D-pad and have it right there. So yeah, that's it for buttons. Um, underneath PTT ID, we want to go ahead and enable this. This is how we see who is talking on the radio, especially for digital channels, for P25 channels. We wanna have that on. And then underneath advanced, um, we really don't have to change a whole lot in here. Um, yeah, we're not really gonna be dealing with talk groups. That's sort of a DMR, digital radio thing, not really a P25 thing. You do have the option to do it, That's but that's more of like a trunked radio feature that's more useful in that case. And then here, um, if you want to have a power on password, this is where you enable that. Underneath radio lock and tactical inhibit. Now it's more of an advanced feature, but I, Usually like to keep my radios a little more freedom and, and, and um, easier to use. However, if, situa if the situation gets bad, I would enable radio lock and have an unlock password. And every single time you turn on the radio, you have to type in that password in order for you to use it. 
which is a good idea. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on the other radio right here and make sure the display menu items are the same. Okay, now I have display in the menu sorted out. We can go ahead and go down to conventional configuration. And I think this is all good. The defaults should look like this. And now we get to the absolute bear and atrocity of Asher 25. Personalities, okay. So personalities are both a very, very great thing and a very, very terrible thing if you have front panel programming enabled. So as you can see, I have an extreme amount of personalities on this radio, okay? And if you buy the radio already pre-programmed, there's chances are you're not gonna have this, okay? But since I started with a fresh code plug here, the default, for whatever reason, Motorola thought it was a brilliant idea to have as many personalities. Okay, so let me, let me sort of explain the problem. Front panel programming on this radio is weird, okay? It's just weird. Now on the radio side of things, it's great, it works fine. However, on the programming side of things, it's a little interesting, okay? So with F since I started with a blank code plug, the code plug has 16 zones, or actually 15 zones, and you it automatically just starts out and spews out 15 zones, even though I don't want that, I want like three, right? So the terrible thing about FPP, front panel programming, is that every single channel has to have a personality, okay? And a personality defines what the channel does, which encryption key it uses, which scan list it's on, um, the Astro system, uh, basically how P25 is configured. And it's every single channel has to have its own personality if you can use FPP on it. Or let me phrase that correctly. FPP, every single FPP channel or channel that you can front panel program has to have its own personality to it, okay? Why that is, I don't know, and I absolutely hate it, okay? But it's something you're gonna have to deal with if you wanna be able to use your radio and program it through the front panel, okay? So that's just sort of a shame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend the next five minutes deleting all these zones to get rid of all these personalities, okay? And this is something you might have to do, but I'm going to suck it up and just do it. And so the way you do it is you actually have to disable FPP on each zone, okay? And this is sort of, so sorry about that. I, my, my camera ran out of storage, so I had to restart the recording. So in order for you to actually get rid of all these personalities, you have to disable in order for you to delete this zone, you have to disable FPP. Uh, CPS will not allow you to delete the zone if if it's an FPP zone, and then it asks you if you want to do that, and it will it will delete 16 FPP channels and personalities because this is no longer an FPP zone. Okay, so let me cover that again. In order for you to have front panel programming, the channel that the zone the zone that the channel is in has to be FPP enabled, right? And another thing is that, I'm gonna go ahead and delete these, right? And it's gonna reopen, maybe. All right, just like that. All right, so reopen. I'm gonna go back down here into zones and we'll see zone 15 is still here. So given this limitation, Astro 25 CPS forces you to have FPP zones at the very front. The very first zones have to be FPP, which is not great, okay? So usually 
I like to only have one FPP zone, which means I have 16 total channels that I could program at my leisure and put in any frequency and put in any mode I want later down it, through the front of the radio, right? So like, let's say I meet up with the guys, a bunch of dudes with bow fangs and they have a certain frequency they're running on. I could go ahead and plug in their frequency in here and talk to them all I want, right? So, but I don't want all these zones to be able to do that. I just want a, a single zone with 16 channels that I can mess around with. So I'm gonna go ahead and do, delete all of these zones and I have to disable FPP once again and it's gotta reopen, delete that. And I'm actually just gonna speed this along because this is gonna take a little bit. Okay, so I am now left with one zone right here and 17 personalities, all right? So I have 16 channels in one zone and that is, um, I believe that is the maximum amount of channels you could have per zone, right? It's 16 channels. So these are all FPP channels because the, the zone is FPP enabled, right? These are all FPP channels, therefore they all have to have their own personality, right? So this channel is a personality, channel two is a personality, channel three is a personality, and you can see here um, that in here in, uh, so you can see in here they, co they, they correspond and that since they're FPP, they're automatically forced, they're automatically forced to use a personality right here. And you can't change, you might be able to change this actually you can't so like I'm trying to select 11 it forces it to, to 12 you know it, it's not great right so I, I I recommend keeping zone 1 just for FPP and I'll actually name it that right and then after this I'm just gonna add a new zone and the way you do that is you go to zone channel assignment and click on the zone and add a zone right here with this plus button Right, and it adds zone two. And you can see FEP is not enabled on this one because we deleted all the zones that had FEP, right? So this should be without FEP, um, and any other zone we add will not have FEP enabled, which is amazing, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these because I don't need these. I'll just leave a second zone. So this, I'm just gonna call this ops or operations, right? Uh, this, you name it whatever you want, Maybe you want to fill this with FRS channels. You could add all the FRS channels in here. You do what you want, all right? So speaking about FRS, I want to, let's say I want to talk, I want to load this radio with FRS channels, right? Or this, I want to load this this zone with FRS channels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the channel name, rename the channel by double clicking this and just type FRS1 or FRS channel one, right? And we can see here that, that this is referencing personality 17. And if I try to select personality 16, it won't let me, or 15, or two, it won't let me because these personalities are forcibly assigned to zone one's channels, right? Since these are FPP. Now, if your radio doesn't have FPP, so like, let's say if we go to the feature tree, radio information, feature set, if your radio does not have front panel programming, then you don't have to worry about any of this. This this does not apply to you. The all the if we go into the other code plug here, if we go into conventional personalities, you won't have any of this and you won't have all these zones here, okay? So that's that's something you have to weigh if you want to program this, right? As if you want FEP or not. So um yeah, let's just continue on. So I wanna add FRS1, all right? So this corresponds to personality 17, and I can't change this, remember? So it'll be personality 17. If we go to personality 17 and double click it, it opens up the personality menu. So we actually can define what this channel does or what this personality does, and then this channel is assigned that personality in here, the conventional personality menu, all right? So, 
First things we, the first thing we want to do is FRS is analog only. Okay, FRS is just for analog radios, like the, the, the Walmart radios you buy, but we want to talk to those radios. So what you want to do is go to RX options and go to RX voice and signal type. So there are some options here, non-astro, which is analog, mixed mode, which is both analog and p25 and then astro which is just p25 and i don't know why motorola calls calls astro p20 they call they call p25 astro for whatever reason but just note that this is p25 conventional uh but yeah whatever so we're gonna do non-astro because that's analog and then we don't want this to be a receive only personality. So what a receive only personality does is it prevents this channel, if it's assigned that personality, it prevents me from pressing the PTT button right here, right? If I press it, it'll say TX inhibit or it might say something like I can't or it just won't let me do it, right? So back in here, um, make sure it's set to personality 17. Uh, make sure that's not checked. Receive only personality should not be checked. TX options. And since this is analog receive, it forces us to use analog transmit, all right? Now, even if you try to set it to P25 transmit, it won't let you because this is analog only. Now, if you wanna use P25 and receive analog at the same time, you have to use mixed mode. Since you're transmitting on P25, yet you can receive analog or whatever is being transmitted that's not digital right so you can do that select it to mix mode which is actually what I recommend if you are going to be using p25 channels which I'll get into in just a moment but uh, for now let's just select non astro okay so leave RX emphasis and busy LED on those are some nice defaults um, TX options should be non astro so again you're transmitting analog right Power level, I like to set this default to low, okay? And you'll actually be able to change this in the menu since we selected the, the power menu features underneath radio configuration, display and menu, menu items. Power is what changes this transmit power right here, okay? But default, it's low, all right? So I'm gonna go to close out this and put this to the front okay so this is fine this will work and everything else here should work all right so then you can look through these and look through signaling signaling is not something we really mess with MDC is not something we mess with um, and I know a lot of FRS radios will have something called CT CSS or PL tones or digital squelches or stuff like that, right? Or privacy tones, whatever the manual calls them, right? And if you need to mess with that, the way that you do that is not actually in the personality, okay? So for all intents and purposes, for an analog only channel that's not doing any repeating or anything like that, we are done messing with this personality, all right? So we can go back into the zone channel assignment, and I know this is a lot of back and forth, and that's how Astro 25 CPS is gonna be. So just get used to it, right? Let's say we want to talk to FRS, right? F FRS channel. So let me go into Chrome, and I'm gonna look up the FRS channel table. So if we go to FCC FRS, all right? If we just search that up, you go to the FCC website, I'm gonna move that right here, and go to data, all right? These are all the FRS channels. So if you have an FRS channel, you tune it to channel one, it's going to be talking on this frequency, all right? So I wanna to talk to FRS channel one, right? I'm gonna copy this frequency right here and paste it into the receive frequency and the transmit frequency, all right? And you can you can delineate or you can differentiate the receive frequency and the transmit frequency. So it's important that these are the same if you're not using a repeater. All right. So remember how I was talking about the trans or the PL tones, the privacy tones, the digital digital squelches and stuff like that. This is where you set it up. All right. So if you want to 
open up the squelch on the radio when somebody's using a PL tone. And there's a bunch of other videos on YouTube and stuff like that describing what PL tones, digital squelches, D or yeah, what what those do, or CTCSS. Um, you can go ahead and research that. But if you want to use that, and if some of these FRS radios use those those PL tones and stuff like that, this this is where you would set it. All right. And usually FRS radios have this configurable. And if you can't talk to the FRS radio, even though you have the frequencies set correctly, this is probably the issue, all right? Maybe the receive squelch is not correct or the transmit squelch. But for for just generality, this will de disabling the receive squelch to just CSQ um, so you're not using the PL tones or the privacy tones or the digital privacy. You just have the radio will receive everything, regardless if if it's having a PL tone or not, right? Now, if the receiving, if the other FRS radio that you're trying to talk to can't hear you, th this is almost certainly the problem. You need to enable PL tone or DPL. Um, this is something you're gonna have to figure out. It's probably gonna be the manual on on what these are using for the FRS radio. Right, so the frequency should be set to the channel you want to talk to, and the PL tone should be what you want to use to talk to it. And for right now, I don't need to do that since all my radios have this disabled. All my FRS radios has this, has this disabled. But one more thing before we can talk to analog radios or analog FRS radios is we need to set the bandwidth of the channel. Okay, so you could see here. Um, in the Family Radio Service F FCC website, FRS is 22 channels, and each has a bandwidth of 12.5 kilohertz. All right, so this is where you would set that. So right here, you see 25 kilohertz, and if we go to the drop down, we have 12.5 kilohertz right here, and we want to be using this for FRS channels. But if we try to select this, it won't work. All right, and the reason why is because we need to set this deviation to 2.5. So if I select 2.5, it sets this to 2.5, and then this is now 12.5 kilohertz. Boom. All right, so now we're using the same channel bandwidth um, that an actual FRS radio has to have. All right, so you want to be using this. You want to be using narrow band or 12.5 kilohertz whenever you're talking to FRS radios. All right, so everything else sh here should work. All right, and if we use an FRS radio, this uh, on channel one, this should work. And this is going to be the same way for, let's say, FRS channel two. All right, so I'm gonna type that in right now. And type in, get the, the channel frequency. Paste that in there, and make sure the transmit and receive frequencies are the same. And go over here toward, to the bandwidth and change that to 2.5 kilohertz, all right? Now, you might be thinking, oh, well, I didn't change the personality. The personality is the same. Oh, actually, let me disable that. Okay. The personality is the same. And that's fine. All right. This is the personality defines the channel behavior. All right. And for all the FRS channels, the behavior is going to be the same. Okay. And so that's, that's one benefit of using personalities is that you can add all the, oh, my bad. You can add all the channels you want, and they can have the same personality. So as long as you want the channel behavior to be the same, all right. So that's something that you need to figure out yourself and kind of understand how the personalities work and, and what you want to achieve. So both these will work with personality 17. I should now be able to talk to FRS channel one and channel two. And if you want to add more channels, you totally can. So now. We need to, if you want to use P25, you generally aren't allowed to use P25 or digital on FRS. FRS is generally analog only. So yeah, that's something you want to consider. Now, what you could do is if you are a licensed ham radio operator, you can use P25 on ham radio frequencies. However, you need a license to do that. You can't just do that. You need a license to do that, and you can't use encryption because, by God, the hams will hate you for that if you use encryption on 
their frequencies, all right? So we have to get a little creative. One, we can use FRS on, we, we can use P25 on FRS, all right? FRS is the Wild West, I like to say. Um, just be smart. If you hear somebody else talking, then do not, uh, then do not, you know, change channels. Do not talk over them. It's not nice for you to be interfering on somebody else's communications, all right? So the way that we're actually going to do that is we're going to make a new personality if, you, if we want to use P25. We want to make a new personality. So right now it's personality 18. We want to change the RX voice and signal type to Astro, all right? Um, and actually, we're going to do this to mixed mode because uh, if we have it set to Astro only, like I said just, just a couple seconds ago, you don't want to be talking over somebody else, right? And you can't tell if somebody else is talking, like let's say they're using analog, when you're only receiving P25, right? Your radio will not open up its squelch if, if it's hearing analog in this mode. If we set it to mixed mode, we'll be able to hear analog and P25 at the same time, right? So I highly recommend this if you are using this on FRS or, or a frequency you're not licensed to use P P25 on, all right? That's just generally speaking, you should be using mixed mode most of the time. And then for TX options, we will only be left with Astro, all right? Can't have mixed mode and non-Astro. Actually, wait. Yeah, so we have mixed mode here, and then on TX options, we want to switch this to Astro because we want to be transmitting P25, right? We want to be using digital. And of course, we always want to set our power to low, and we can change this in the menu, like how I just showed you a couple of minutes ago. So everything else in here should be fine, all right? Besides the Astro system, okay? So the Astro system is actually where you start to define the P25 functionality, all right? So in all P25 programming softwares, you will have something called the system, okay? And right now, this personality, personality 18, is set to system two. So if we go down to conventional and Astro systems, we will have the system list right here, and we'll have one and two, just like we can select one and two. But here's the catch. Again, another caveat of CPS. You have to use system two for non-FPP channels. FPP reserves system one, so you can't use it. Even if I select it right here, it won't let me, right? It won't let me. But if I go down to the earlier personalities that are used by the FPP channels down here, like personality two, um, if I go to Astro, uh, let's say I enable P25, let's do mixed mode, uh, Astro. So now it forces me to use that for FPP channels. And even if I select system two, it won't work, right? So let me revert this back to an analog only channel for right now. Okay, we're set. And now I can't select that, cool. So back to personality 18, it forces us to use system two. And in the Astro system, system two, we get to define how the Astro system works or how P25 kind of behaves. All right, so individual ID is the radio ID. So if you've ever used DMR, this would be the radio ID or the contact or the talk group sometimes. In P25, the analog or the, the analogous uh, version of this is the individual ID or the radio ID. All right, so for, for now, for this purpose, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to do zero one. All right, so the radio ID is zero one on this. Now, on the other radio, whenever I program this one, I'm just going to be copying whatever I did on the left one, on the right one. It should be very identical besides the Astro system ID, the, the radio ID in the Astro system. So if I scroll all the way up on the right hand side over here, go to Astro systems, system, system two, this is going to be radio two on the right hand side. I'm going to type in two, right? So now when the radio when when the radio on the left keys up or transmits, it's transmitting with the ID of one, all right? And when ra the radio on the right transmits, it's transmitting with the ID of two. Now the, the reason why this is useful is because we can go down to 
the Astro System configuration over here uh, under Astro Systems and go to Call List. And we have this Call List right here. Uh, we can name it List 1, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to go into this over here. So on the right hand side is Radio 2 and the left hand side is Radio 1, right? We could actually set the Call ID or the Radio ID. So Radio 1 is going to be, uh, we're going to call it Radio 1. So Radio 1. So this is the ID of that radio, of this radio on the left hand side. And when when somebody is receiving when somebody is receiving P25 with the radio ID as 1, this is what will show up on the screen. Radio 1 will show up on the screen, all right? So maybe this radio belongs to Bob, right? So when Bob talks with the radio ID of 1, you will see Bob on the, on your screen right here. Uh, you'll see it right here. So I'm going to do Bob, all right? And on radio 2, let's type in radio 2. Um, maybe Jack, right? Jack. So you might see a problem here. This is Radio 1 and the call list only has Radio 1. And this is Radio 2 over here and only has Radio 2. This is an issue because when this radio talks, it re the receiving radio, uh, so re when Radio 1 talks, Radio 2 will be listening and referencing this list, all right? And since this radio has a radio ID of 1, it's looking for the call ID of 1 in here, and it's not here, right? So it'll just display this number. Now, what we want to do, this is best, pra best, best practice, is add all of the radio IDs that you will ever have, even the one that's assigned to the Astro system in here, in this call list. The call list should be the same for both radios, right? So I'm gonna put Jack in here as the call ID of one or two. And then um, Bob is the call ID of one, all right? And I could actually, uh, I don't think I can move that up and down, okay. But yeah, so these are now identical and when this radio talks, this one should see Bob. And when radio two talks, this one should see Jack, right? Makes sense. So we can go to close out of that. So all of this links back to the personality. So in the personality, we have to define the call list. And that's going to be underneath Astro call right here. So we want it's automatically default to call list one because that's the one that has our contacts in it or the radios in it um so yeah now now this is this personality is referencing astro system 2 which is right here which is where we define the radio id so you can so you can see how it's starting to get a little complicated here and it can get over your head but just rewatch the video several times if this doesn't make sense okay so this should be set and we can close out of that. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mirror everything I did on the left-hand radio on the right-hand radio, or radio two. So let me do that real quick. All right, so I deleted all the FPP channels and zones right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate what is in zone two. So I'm gonna rename it ops on the, the one on the radio on the right. FPP is disabled. And go to channels, FRS one, personality 17, receive frequency, boom, Boom, bandwidth, deviation of 12.5 kilohertz, and that adds up to 12.5 kilohertz. Oh, did I say that correctly? Deviation of 2.5 kilohertz, which adds up to 12.5 kilohertz. All right, cool. And then FRS channel two, 
Personality 17, just fine. This frequency, that frequency, boom, 2.5 kilohertz, and that adds up to 12.5 kilohertz total bandwidth. Okay, so now let's go back into the personality. I'm just gonna go ahead and mirror that. Um, so personality 17 is non-astro, so analog, analog, default power is low, signaling none, everything in here should be good. So now I'm gonna add personality 18, this is the P25 personality. And let's go to RX options, let's do mixed mode, astro, default transmit power of low, um, and then astro system. So if we go to astro, system two is selected, Everything in here looks good. Astro call, the call list is one. And that should be fine. Boom. And then now we have to make the, we actually have to go and make the P25 channel. So these are both analog channels, right? So let's, I'm just gonna use FRS three, or maybe um, let me do FRS 11 for P25, all right, just, just because. So I'm gonna do P25 FRS 11, right? And actually that name is a little too big. So I'm just gonna do P FRS 11, all right? So as in P25 FRS 11. And I'm gonna select the personality that does the digital mode. So that does P25, so that's going to be personality 18 um, because we set the transmit to be Astro, right? And then I'm oh, gonna grab this frequency again paste that in there, paste that in there, and make sure the bandwidth is the same because the bandwidth should be the same across all these channels because the FCC said so right here, okay? So yeah, that's that for this radio. Let me go back over here and duplicate that. Um, PFRS 11. Personality 18, because that's the digital one. Paste that frequency in there. Oops. Paste that in there. 12, 2.5 kilohertz, which adds up to 12.5 kilohertz. The transmit frequency is the same as the receive frequency, that's good. All right, so now we should be done with messing with these radios at least to get these to talk to each other. So the next step would be to actually write what we just did to the radio, all right? So right now I have, um, let's see which radio I have plugged into the computer. I have the one on the left plugged into the computer right now. So the way I actually write to this radio is just by clicking this button up here called Write Device. And you should see the, the light on the cable flash a little bit, and this should go into programming mode in just a moment. And this should write a little faster because all those personalities, all those zones are now gone since we deleted them. And occasionally you'll get, uh, depending on your radio, you'll get this write radio failed. Um, all you gotta do is just keep trying to write to the radio and this, this error will pop up. It just depends on how old your radio is and when it was made and stuff like that. And sometimes the cable might be bad and mine might be. Um, like you'll get this fail 82, just don't panic, just write it, write to it again. And Astro CPS is smart enough to, to just force it back into there. Um, and eventually it will work. And you can see here, right, successful. Boom. Okay. All right. So now we have the zone pop up FPP channel one. And if we change zones with the zone lever right here to B, which is now zone two, 
we have ops FRS 1 all right and then if we change the channel up here with the channel knob we have FRS 2 not not that far FR uh, ops P FRS 11 so that's P25 FRS 11 all right great so what we did in CPS is reflective on the radio right here all right and if all the buttons work the same so I programmed the purple button for the backlight presses that if I press that it, it changes the the backlight on and off. Okay, so now let's do the other radio. I'm just gonna disconnect it and plug this one in and go to the radio on the right and just click right. And another thing you wanna do after these are done writing is you wanna save these code plugs, all right? And I'm just gonna save it, uh, I'm just gonna save it to this PC desktop for right now and I'm just gonna save it like that boom okay so right successful it was right successful on the other radio and I actually see right here I forgot to change the zone um, the zone label um, so if I go to ops I actually did it for ops but not FPP I'll go ahead and fix that right now there's bound to be mistakes in the first time you program these and even after programming these a million times, I still make mistakes. Actually, it's not FRS, let's do FPP. Boom, okay. And then on the other one, I'm gonna save it. I'm just gonna save it on the desktop as well. Boom. And then I'm gonna write back to the device. So we're almost done here, guys. Another, another tip for y'all is after you get encryption loaded onto these and after you sort of program them and got your code plug to work, you never wanna read from these anymore, okay? So reading is actually how you cause problems. If you if you constantly read the radio, modify the code plug, write it back, and then you don't save it inside CPS in here, you'll actually run the risk of kind of breaking the radio. Okay, I've, I've actually seen this a couple times. Um, and the more often you do it, the, the more problematic it can be. These are sort of older radios and the, the technology inside of them is not as good as the newer stuff. Uh, so therefore you kind of have to treat them like babies, all right? You gotta be careful about what you do in the software, what you, um, especially with Depot and those advanced tools and tuner, you gotta be careful. You can actually ruin these pretty easily if you don't know what you're doing and you're just clicking buttons, right? So you wanna make sure you save everything. Save all the code plugs and you never want to read from these radios after you've done all your configuration to them. You always wanna be writing to the radios. So for instance, if I go to CPS, I open up the code plug I just saved right here. Um, I don't want to ever read from this from the radio that's plugged in right now. I always want to be writing um, even after modifications in here, right? So that's just what you should do every single time you modify the code plug in any ways. You always want to write to the radio, not read from. Um, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so now I unplug this and let's go to FRS1. So I'm going to change zones again on this radio up here to B, zone B or zone 2. Um, and go to the same channel on this one, FRS1. I should be able to talk to this. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Testing one, two, testing one, two. We increase the volume. Testing one, one, two, testing one, two. Testing one, two, testing one, two. All right, so this works. Um, now go to FRS2. Testing one, two, testing one, two. All right, that works. Testing it. Oh, if you get these a little too close, they, they do a little whiny. Just a little weird, a uh, little old feature, I suppose. And then on P25, we go to P25. One, one, two, two three, four. four. One, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Testing this is P25 unencrypted on FRS. On FRS. Okay, cool. And you can sort of hear the differences between analog. So if I go to analog. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then if I go to P25. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Radio test. P25. 
can hear there's a bit of a difference there and that's something you're going to have lots of fun experimenting with with your own radio. So that concludes this video. I know it was a very long video. However, Astro 25 is a beast and I hope this sort of helped you get around that learning curve, okay? I know, I know it's really challenging to, to just jump into. So I hope this video sort of broke down things in sort of a longer, um, more in-depth tutorial than some of the other ones that are on YouTube. Um, so this is probably gonna be like an hour long or something like that, something crazy. But um, yeah, so I just hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a like if you guys want. Ask any questions you want in the comments. I know this was a very complicated video, so just just try to figure out what you anything you want to do on these, all right? And and just really try to experiment and and take the knowledge that you learned in this video and and just start imagining on the things you could do, all right? And just don't get discouraged with the software. I know it's very challenging, but once you figure it out and once it clicks you will be very satisfied with the results. These radios are so capable, they could do so many things, um, and if you get it to all work in CPS, you will have a blast with these radios. These, these radios can do you know, AES-256, and a whole bunch of encryption and, and, and very nice secure features, security features. If you get it to work, you'll be very pleased with the result. And these will be, you know, pretty dang good duty radios for in the field and if you want to do packet data and, and some of that stuff, the advanced stuff. Um, we'll have plenty of videos on that uh, in the future and, and sort of describing how all that stuff works and, and how, do you, how to get your computers to, to talk to this and do email over these and, and whatever, right? Um, those are going to be, uh, it's just sort of the envelope of what these are capable of. Now, it's just all about learning on how to actually set that up and that's the big deal and that's why I'm making these videos to help you guys do that too because uh, I don't I, do, I don't want to just be the only person <laughs> figuring out all this stuff I want you guys to be able to do, do it as well so that's enough said um, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here and uh, stay tuned for more videos and subscribe to our Odyssey channel if you haven't already um, that's where all of our more spicy videos are going to be in terms of radios and, and some of the software is going to be on there as well so stay tuned just just uh, you know, pay attention and, and um, uh, have a great rest of your day because I'm sure your brain is probably pretty fried after watching this video. So y'all take care. Bye-bye.